Hey guys, Triple B here. So we finally have the full set list for the upcoming set Snow Hazard and Clay Burst coming out in Japan on April 14th next week. Haven't seen all of the secret rares and stuff, but as the set gets closer to release date, I'm sure we'll start seeing more leaks of that. Have covered a lot of the cards though, so if you haven't kept up with the reveal videos, they should be kind of popping up on the screen right now, but we'll just give a quick summary just taking a look through the list on here. This article is posted on Poke Beach. If you haven't checked that site out, Highly recommend it. They're a great source of Pokemon news, really great articles, and they keep on top of the reveals. So if you prefer to read it, check out their site, or if you want to kind of hang around until I go through them, got options there too. So I'll try and do these videos at least once a week just to kind of keep up with the news as it comes out. But looking into the set list, we do have the pack arts here. So we're getting the Paldea starters and then two of the legendaries, which is pretty cool. And we actually got the first Dragon Pokemon revealed for Scarlet and Violet as well, being Noivat and Noivern EX, which is pretty exciting. And we'll get to them in just a moment once we've got the translations in front of us. I'm going to skip over the artwork here, though, but there is a lot of filler cards in here as well. They're continuing the tradition of like 100 to 200 card sets, which is good for collectors. But if you're playing the game and just looking for singles of things, it does complicate it a little bit. With Scarlet and Violet, though, the price of buying singles has gone down. So uh, what are your thoughts on it? Are you a fan of the big sets or do you wish they'd condense them a little bit more and just kind of keep meta relevant cards? That's just a quick summary of them. And then the trainer galleries we have got to see. Didn't realize quite how many there was. Scroll, 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 scroll. <laughs> All right, so getting into the Pokemon that are in the set, we are seeing Surskit. Mascarin, neither of them's really that exciting. We are getting a combi. I like the triple B. The triple B is cool. It evolves into Vespaquin that has raid control. It does 120 damage. Then if you have a combi on your bench, you have to shuffle it into your deck. If you don't, you can't use this attack. So an interesting way to get 120 for one energy. Is it a great attack? Not really. You're not even half hitting into things. Maybe with time, Grass will get more support and it'll be a more viable card. Could be a little bit of a rogue deck heading forward. The Snover and Obama Snow, though, are pretty interesting. So Snover is essentially here just to evolve into Obama Snow, but Obama Snow has a really interesting ability. Catastrophic Freeze. No Pokemon can be healed when this is in play, because nothing can get healed. Decks like Gardevoir EX, where they're putting damage counters out, accelerating energy, they're likely going to want to heal those off, and they're not going to be able to do that. So it's an interesting tech you can put into decks. Obviously, being a Stage 1 Pokemon, you can be using Zoroark from Evolving Skies and just kind of swap over to him. So I could see this being a, a deck slot that gets taken up if self-damaging decks uh, make a comeback. And Gardevoir is seeing quite a bit of play currently, so if it becomes a meta-defining card, I could see this being a counter to it. Got Bonsuite, Steeny, and a Serena. Nothing really too exciting here. Queen's Heal, 60 damage during your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon can't be evolved. It's getting up to a stage 2, though, so by the time you're getting this out, they've likely evolved. Getting a Bramblin, two Bramblins, it looks like, and then a Bramblegast, 80 damage during your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon's attacks cost two colorless more. It's kind of interesting. The attack cost of it being three colorless energy, though. Bit of a trade-off, but we are getting that comeback energy card where if you're behind on prizes, it counts as three energy. So it could be a way to get that charged out. Also being a stage one, like the Abomasnow, you could sneak it out with Zoroark. Could it? So I could see this being like a control arch type potential. Getting some Relo Wars and the Wu Chen EX. I know there was a lot of hype seeing if this card would get revealed. We saw all the other legendaries. It took a while to get the Wu Chen. Pretty cool guy. It looks like most of this, though, we have kind of covered. Just keeping an eye out if there is anything new. So we, ooh, Ice Q. I don't think we've seen Ice Q. Ice Q has Ice Block, 100 damage, discard all energy from this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. It takes 100 less damage from attacks. That's interesting. We're getting that back Scalibur that can accelerate water energy out, so you could get this set up fairly consistently. Getting the energy back, though, you'd have to use, like, Clara or Energy Retrieval, so it's not impossible. A little bit tricky, and obviously Gudra Vista are essentially doing the same thing without having to discard energy and doing larger numbers. Is this going to see play? Potentially. It definitely could be a potential slot in as like one spot. Maybe decks that run Ditto run it or like water boxes run it. We'll see what happens with it. And I could see it being a good card to pick up one copy of. Getting some set toddles and Satitan? Is that how you say his name? Satitan? Special horn, 80 damage if it has any special energy attacks. 
140 more, so 220, pretty good number to hit. 180 HP on a stage one is pretty solid as well. Balooza, 120 damage. If you don't have any cards in your hand though, you can use this for one water energy. And it's a basic level one. That's kind of spicy actually. I don't mind that. That could definitely be just, yeah, an easy slot one copy in. And I like that they're doing that. They're creating more just single prize attackers that it's like, hey, we're going into a format where there's a lot of stage two, two prizers. While they're evolving up, if you need something quick just to be able to bench an attack. Here's a basic you can use instead. It's pretty interesting that they're going for that. Getting the Friggy Backs line, and that's going to evolve up into the Backscalibur. Lets you accelerate as many water energy out from your hand to one of your Pokemon during your turn as you'd like. It's pretty busted and combos very nicely with Chin Pao EX. If you haven't seen this guy already, has the ability Trembling Cold. Once during your turn, if this is in the active, search your deck for two basic water energy. Combos very nicely with the Backscalibur that will then accelerate it out to this Pokemon. Its attack Hail Blizzard lets you discard any amount of water and energy from this Pokemon and does 60 damage for each card you discard in this way. So I'll comboing that with Backscalibur and its ability and the fact that you can chain multiple of these in a turn by switching them around, you can hit some pretty crucial numbers with that and will definitely be a powerhouse card moving forward. Did also see the reveal of Slowpoke and Slowking EX today, which is pretty cool. So Slowking EX, it is a terrestrial Pokemon, so when it's on the bench, it's not taking damage. And its attacks are Profound Knowledge, which is going to do 30 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. So not bad. Obviously, making them have to switch out or flip a coin to try and damage you, it's kind of helpful. And its second attack, Wisdom Headbutt, 130 damage. Search your deck for any two cards, put them into your hand. Could definitely see this becoming a bit of a control deck as well. The fact that it's any two cards is really nice. We have Magnazone V-Star that lets you search for any item cards, but this just saying any specific cards... It could definitely be a bit of a threat. You can get stadiums, you can get supporters with that new Giovanni's Charisma card coming out as well. Being able to just slow your opponent down, attaching energy while accelerating out to your own guys. I could see that being a nice combo piece with the Slow King, and it'll be interesting to see what people come up with for this card. Looks like we're getting a Gothita line, so we're getting Gothita, Gotharita, and it evolves up into Gothitel. So the ability Astrology, once during your turn, you can look at the top two cards of your opponent's deck. Okay. And if you do, put one of those cards on the top and the other on the bottom. So you can see what your opponent's trying to top deck next turn and just be like, no. You can tell they have a bricked hand and they need a research and you see one, don't let them have it. Or they need boss for game next turn, don't let them have it. The fact that you can combo this with Iono as well. So Iono your opponent down to like one or two card hand and then just control what they're going to draw into. It's pretty powerful. The fact that it is on a stage two, though, does make it a little bit tricky. You can obviously cheat it out with things like Dream Ball, though. So it might become a card moving forward. And I could definitely see some people kind of jumping onto this card as a option, especially since decks like Gardevoir are running rare candies. Even just having this in your list as a 1-1 one -one line, it could be an option moving forward. Mimikyu we have seen before, and you get to just prevent all damage done to this by your opponent's Pokemon EX and Pokemon V. Very solid. It's nice to have something like that that you can put out. And it's attack, Ghost Eye. You get to put seven damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon. Not bad. Psychic and a colorless. It's a little bit costly, but it's effectively the replacement for Mill Tank we're getting moving forward. Does look like we're getting a Sinistee and Pulte, guys. Nomad Party on here, though, unfortunately. But the attack, Antique Collecting, is going to let you put two in any combination of item and Pokemon tool cards back from the discard pile into your hand is interesting that they're having to start wording that. If you aren't aware, there was a change with the format going forward, so tool cards aren't considered items anymore. So even though you have a choice belt that says it's an item, it's a tool now. You have to be aware of that, and the fact that they're bringing that to people's attention with the Scarlet and Violet cards is very good, and just something to be aware of. If you have been playing the game for a while, cards you have, they're slightly changed. The Rabaska evolving from the Relor... Relor? The little poop bug we saw earlier <laughs> revival blessing one colorless energy choose a pokemon from your discard pile pop it onto your bench this could also be a way we sneak out that gothitel so interesting um the Mankey evolving up into primate and then annihilate ex which we've already covered but it lets you put up to 12 damage counters on this pokemon and do 20 damage for each counter you do it's not bad it's on a stage two a lot of health awkward to set up but the attack cost being one energy i could definitely see people trying to make this work and it'll be fun to play around with for sure 
Pseudo Widow has hit and hide. 20 damage, flip a coin if heads during your opponent's next turn prevent all damage and effects of the attacks done to this. It's not bad. Um, the fact that you could be running it with Grant as well, so 20 damage up to 50 and then give it like a choice belt or something to bump that up to 80. It's not an awful number to hit. Coin flip though, a little bit tricky. Probably something that I'll see play at pre-release. Not much outside of that. We are getting two copies of Glim Glimit? Is it Glimit? Glimlet. This little dude, derpy looking fella. Uh, first one, kind of useless. The second one, though, it does have Ascension. So you get to search your deck for a card that evolves from this and put it onto this Pokemon to evolve it. So like we had a coughing that went up to the Galarian Weezing to lock your opponent out. We are getting a Glimit with that. If we get a Glamora EX in the future, I could definitely see this being played. The current Glamora we have does have the ability that when this is knocked out, you flip a coin. If it's heads, your opponent doesn't take any prizes. So even just evolving up to that with Ascension isn't bad. It's attack though, it's one fighting energy, your opponent's active Pokemon's poisoned, and during checkup they take six damage counters. It's not bad, it's not great, you can combo it with Radiant Sneasler to bump that damage up a little bit, and the fact they might not be taking prize cards could be fun to play around with. Taking out EXs though, when we're seeing guys that have 300 HP, is this a realistic attacker? Not really. Is it going to be something that might be fun in like single prize por formats like GLC? Absolutely. We're getting a Murkrow with Wings of Union. If you haven't seen that archetype yet, very cool. We're getting Murkrow, Flamigo, and Wattrol that all have that attack, and it just does 20 damage times the number of guys that have that attack that are in your discard pile, and it's going to be a very fun budget deck to play around with. Especially if we get another card that has Wings of Union, bringing it up to four different copies, get 16 in the discard, and being able to use Ditto, similar to how we did with Mad Party. It'll be a very interesting and Kind of gimmicky rogue deck to play around with. Haunch Crow it evolves from, nothing really too special there. We are getting a Mastiff, two Mastiffs it looks like, and a Mambo, Mabo Stiff. Comeuppance? Is that actually its attack name? Comeuppance? That's epic. Uh, 20 damage during your opponent's next turn. If this is damaged by an attack, even if it's knocked out, put damage counters on the attacking Pokemon equal to the damage done to this Pokemon. That's pretty funny actually. So if they're doing like overkill damage, like if you're up against single strike lugia they've got something charged up with a bunch of single strike energy and are doing a ludicrous amount of damage it's going to overkill this so even though it only has 140 hp if you've got 130 damage they hit you for 300 you're taking 300 damage still so it's going to just mirror that back onto them so that's kind of funny i actually really enjoy that and the fact that it's a double colorless energy for that it's definitely something that could be included in zoro box moving forward yeah pretty keen on that card actually that's really fun Getting a Bronzor and Bronzong, doesn't look like anything too special here. Bronzong, Oracle Press, 20 damage, prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage done to this. And Extra Sensory, 70 damage. If you have the same number of cards in your hand as your opponent, it does 90 more for 2 Steel Energy though. 160, if you're hitting weakness into something, 320 you can be one-shotting EXs if we get something that's weak to Steel. I believe Gardevoir is weak to Dark though, even though it's a Fairy type, it's not fairy type because we got rid of that so it's not having weakness for that so uh, i don't know that would have been an interesting counter for that if it was corviknight has the attack acceleration 50 damage if your opponent's pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack prevent all effects of attack including damage done to this pokemon that's cool actually i like that so if you get your opponent to pretty close to dead and then just finish it off with this it's like i'm invincible i actually really enjoy that <laughs> Um, 50 damage though, it's not massive, but if you can get it to uh, work, it'll be pretty cool. Qfint and Cooperaja we did cover, but Cooperaja has an ability that makes it take 30 less damage from attacks. It's a pretty standard steel thing. We've seen it with things like Metal Frying Pan and Metal Goggles, so now we're seeing it as an ability on Cooperaja. Having 300 HP, effectively 330 with this, and if they're having to two-shot you, effectively 360. Its attack Noise Quake is going to do 260 damage and 30 damage to each of your bench Pokemon. If they're Cooperaja though, because of their ability, they're going to take zero damage from this damage. So yeah, that's fine. Just get a bunch of elephants set up and just stampede. We did get the reveal of Orthworm as well. So it has the ability neutral Nutritional Iron? Yeah, Nutritional Iron. If this has three or more Steel Energy attached, it gets an extra 100 health. Having 130 base HP on a basic is already pretty big, brings it up to 230 attack is going to do 100 damage and 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That's kind of interesting and could definitely be a cool card in GLC. 
standard not too sure but glc definitely a cool guy to play around with i know steels they have a lot of big basics you can put a evolutions like Aegis Slash to make them take even less damage and then having a big really big guy like this it'll be cool to play around with getting a Dunsparce has find a friend search your deck for a Pokemon put it in your hand and it does have an evolution now to Dunsparce it's slightly longer Dunsparce sudden flash 100 damage your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed shuffle this and all cards attached to it into your deck it's cool that it's colorless so you can be charging it up with Cherum and just be paralyzed locking your opponent and um it's a little concerning that that's like a legit deck. We do get a new energy though, and therapy energy that's going to prevent that from happening. And if the Dunsparce starts seeing play, I could definitely see therapy energy becoming a stable index moving forward. Getting a Winkle and Pelipper. Pelipper has a really cool ability, effectively like Luminion V when you evolve into it. Search your deck for a supporter. Or if you prefer, it can be a Verse Seeker and get a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. Having lost Scoop Up Net, it's not going to be quite as strong, but the fact that it's on a single prize Pokemon instead of putting a Luminion V, which is a two prize Pokemon, and has the flexibility of getting from the deck or the discard, so it's kind of like Luminion V and Eldegoss V in one card, but for less prizes, it's cool. Definitely a cool card, and probably recommend picking up a 2 2 copy when the set does come out. Getting a Slakath. Not Slakath, Slakoth? <laughs> Getting a Slakoth line. So Slakoth, Vigoroth, and then Slacking. Slacking has the ability back to bed. During Pokemon checkup, if this Pokemon's asleep, you have to flip two coins to see if it wakes up. If either of them is tails, it's still asleep. Doesn't combo nicely with its attack, which does 240 damage and puts him to sleep. But it's kind of funny because in the games, his whole thing is that he's lazy. He attacks one turn and then doesn't attack the next turn, but has big stats. Single prize Pokemon doing 240 damage for colorless energy and 180 HP. It's kind of fitting. Like, those are some pretty solid numbers. 240. If you have like a choice belt, 270. If you're doing like a, a Lucha Ping or something, 280 all up, you can be one shotting into V Stars. Cool Pokemon. Very cool Pokemon. You can obviously switch around too to get around the sleep. We're getting Rookadi. That's going to be evolving up into the Corviknight we already saw. And then Squawkabilly EX. If you haven't seen this yet, it's effectively like Dedenne GX from the Sun and Moon era. Except it's limited to only on your first turn being able to be used, and not limited from having to be played from hand. So on your first turn of the game, you can just discard your hand and draw six cards. You can only use one of them though, and the fact that it's only on the first turn, effectively you can only use one of them a game, but you can get it out with Nest Ball, you can get it out with Battle VIP Pass, and just gets you solid support. Is a two prize Pokemon with 160 HP though, so easy target just sitting on your bench. You can obviously get rid of it with things like Collapse Stadium or Penny though, so we'll have ways to kind of alleviate that pressure and the fact that it's giving you extra draw support on your first turn i think it'll be worth it probably just be a one to two copy per deck kind of thing because you're only using it in that first turn unlike battle vip pass you don't really want to be giving up floor slots to it but very cool card very very cool card we're seeing a reprint of super rod as well so shuffle in any combination of three pokemon or basic energy cards from your discard pile into your deck it's great that we're finally seeing item recovery we don't have it right now. Ordinary Rod having just rotated. Our recovery right now is essentially Miriam for Pokemon, Clara for Pokemon and Energy, or Energy Retrieval for Energy Back to Hand, and Energy Recycler. So Energy, we're doing all right, but for Pokemon Recovery, we're kind of hurting. It's all locked behind supporters, so getting it on an item card is very essential. Motivational Lemonade, we're going to be able to use only if you're behind on prize cards it's going to heal 60 damage from one of your pokemon though they're kind of going for the comeback theme at the moment so it's interesting that they're sticking to that and the fact that we're doing a lot of two hit formats <clears throat> the fact that we're seeing a lot of two hit ko's at the moment healing 60 damage could actually be relevant if something's doing like 150 into something with 300 hp making them have to three shot instead of two shot you it's pretty nice New supporter card, Grusha. You draw cards till you have five cards in your hand. If you have no energy cards attached to any of your Pokemon, though, draw seven. That's cool. I feel like there's better draw support at the moment, but giving some flexibility to decks where you're not going to be using energy cards or where you're going to be discarding them. So like Urshifu VMAX, the Rapid Strike one, it's going to discard energy when it uses its attack, has no energy, and then you can use Grusha to draw a bigger hand. That's kind of cool. And then just attach the energy after that. So it could definitely see play in some niche decks like that. Also getting Jai Como, discard a special energy card from each of your opponent's Pokemon. 
essentially Mew's nightmare. If they use Elisa and accelerate out a bunch of special energy to a couple of different guys, so like one on Meloetta, another one on a Mew, another Mew has a double turbo energy, Giacomo is going to make their life really difficult. And uh, for it, <laughs> definitely for it. Snow Mountain of Disaster, pretty cool stadium card we're getting. Whenever any player attaches a energy card from their hand to one of their basic non-water Pokemon, put two damage counters on that Pokemon, and then Reversal Energy is a very, very cool special energy. If you're behind on prizes, this counts as three energy. It's essentially a triple rainbow energy. If you're not, though, it's just a colorless energy, so it's a nice way to kind of balance that out. That's it for the Snowburst cards, and then for Clay Burst, we're just going to kind of skim through the bulk guys here we're getting a hoplip we're getting a skip loom any damage is done to it flip a coin if heads prevent that damage nice the jump bluff has it as well and then has the attack fuzzy wind which does 60 damage and 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench pokemon so pretty cool pineco which is going to evolve up into fortress ex fortress is essentially a replacement for electro gx which we had a while back once during your turn, you can just search your deck for five basic grass energy, attach them to one of your Pokemon in any way that you'd like, but you do have to knock this guy out. It's an EX, so you're giving up two prizes. It's high risk. Could be high reward, though. Like, if you're doing that to take a key knockout and it wins you the game, great. Or if you're using that early in the game to give up prizes to your opponent to then Iona them and make their hand really shit, also great. <laughs> Getting hair across. it's a card. It has attacks that do damage. <laughs> Tarantula, two copies of it, and a new Spidops has Entertainment Trap. Each player shuffles their active Pokemon and all cards attached to them into their deck. That's kind of funny. It does cost two Grass Energy. You can be accelerating out with Gardenia's Vigor or Cherum, though, to get that set up. If your opponent's only got one Pokemon in play, they shuffle it into their deck, they lose the game. If they have no basics in play, they lose. So that's kind of a funny gimmick to play around with, and especially with things where they're going to be accelerating energy out. Maybe you see someone that's running that Fortress EX. They've given up two prizes to accelerate energy all to one guy, and then you make them shuffle that into their deck, and it's like, that's great. You gave me prizes, and you have nothing to show for it. Neat. It'd be pretty funny. I Will that ever come up? I'm sure someone will make it happen. Will it come up regularly? No, but... Interesting card to play around with and definitely could be a rogue deck concept. Getting a Nummel that's going to evolve up into Camerupt has Eruption, 50 damage. Each player discards the top card of their deck. It does 100 more damage for each energy card discarded in that, this way, though. We did have an Entei like this from, I believe it was Lost Thunder. Pretty interesting. Unfortunately, not having something like Primate Wisdom Oranguru to guarantee a energy on top of the deck to set up extra damage on this, though, does make it a little bit tricky. You're milling a bit though, which is kind of funny too. So even if you're hitting an energy and your opponent's not, 150 isn't bad. You're half hitting things and you can be making their life a little bit more difficult. We're getting a Flitchinder and Talonflame. Talonflame has Clutch, 50 damage during your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon can't retreat. And Wind Rage, if this Pokemon has any damage counters on it, 90 more damage. With the base damage of 70, so effectively 160, you can be using Magma Basin to damage this and get the energy out. It's definitely an interesting concept to play around with. Is a stage two though, so might not be worth it. Options there though. Getting a Char Cadet, another Char Cadet, and then a Chu UEX. Are we not getting a, uh, a big guy? We're not getting the, the Firepower Ranger. Interesting. We get two Char Cadets, but no evolution. Okay. Well, we got that one that was essentially like uh, Quagsire and Scarlet and Violet, so I guess we just need more evolutions for him. Uh, Pachuyu EX, very, very cool EX card. Burning Envy, discard two cards from the top of your opponent's deck. Not bad. Mill for one energy. Start of the game, if you're going second, just slow your opponent down a bit. Could be helpful, but the second attack, Flame Surge, is what's really interesting. You do 100 damage, choose three of your bench Pokemon, and search your deck for a basic fire energy to attach to each of those Pokemon. The Char Cadet we just mentioned earlier that evolves into the other guy. Um, what it does is let you move fire energy from your bench Pokemon to the active. So Chuyu being able to accelerate multiple fire energy from the deck and then have that accelerate the energy up to the active, it's going to be a great way to set up fire Pokemon since we don't really have energy acceleration outside of Magma Basin and like Raihan. Welder's not in format anymore. So Chuyu being able to kind of combo into a way to get fire energy out is really interesting. We're seeing a Pikachu 
Evolving up into Raichu, this one has Electric Charge, search your deck for two basic lightning energy, attach them to this Pokemon, and its second attack, Thunderbolt, is going to do 200 damage, discard all energy from this Pokemon. Being lightning though, you can recharge that with Flaffy, so it could be an interesting concept. 200, you're half hitting into EXs. Might actually be an interesting uh, deck concept there. Might have to give it a go. I'm a big fan of Raichu, so whenever he gets cards, I like to see how viable they are. Getting Shinx and Luxio, but they don't even really matter because the Luxray we're getting has the ability Overflowing Ray. Once during your turn, if this is in your hand and you have more prizes than your opponent, you can just play this on the bench. You don't need to evolve them. And its attack Wild Charge is going to cost Lightning Double Colorless, so you can be using Lightning and Double Turbo Energy to pay the attack cost, 180 damage, or Reversal Energy, since you're behind on prizes to trigger the ability. Probably what you're going to be playing with it. Does do 20 damage to itself, but it's essentially a basic Pokemon with 150, so you go down to 130 and do 180 for potentially one energy. That's nice. It's definitely solid. Inner Chin, Stun Needle, 20 damage, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active is now paralyzed. Cool card for pre release. Other than that, probably not. A Static Sizzle does 100 damage, and you can only use this attack if you use Stun Needle during your last turn, so it's an effectively a 1 2 combo. Me paralyzing your opponent and then doing another 100 damage, 120 over two turns. It's fine. Like I said, probably just going to be seen in pre release, though I can't really see that becoming a uh, pivotal attacker going forward, but maybe it is that quick basic Pokemon for Lightning deck since it is just one energy to get it charged up and potentially paralyzes. We're seeing two copies of Tadbulb that are going to evolve up into Belly Bolt EX. So its attack Jump Press lets you do 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Essentially, you can be sniping things off the bench if you'd like. Or Paralyzed Ball for double lightning and a colorless, 160 damage. You may discard two lightning energy from this Pokemon, and if you do, your opponent's active Pokemon's paralyzed. So first time you hit something, paralyze it. Second time you hit it, if it's killing it, don't ditch energy. Save it to paralyze something in the next turn. It's interesting that it gives you the choice to do that and isn't forcing you to discard the energy. New reveal of the Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff line, though, which has the ability Balloon Therapy. So if you have Globophobia, this card's for you. Balloon Therapy is going to let you just attach a Therapy Energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. It's nice that you can be saving your attachment for turn, so maybe it sees play with things like Raikou, Suicune, and Entei that need a Colored Energy and then a Colorless. You could be attaching a Fire Energy and then a Therapy Energy to them and get them set up instead of having to use like Raihan or Magma Basin. Interesting concept. And if uh, Paralysis becomes more of a threat, Therapy Energy will become a pretty solid option to have. Spiritome has the ability Pitch Black Doom. As long as this Pokemon's in play, basic Pokemon V have no abilities. So Genesect is getting shut off, Luminion's getting blocked, Eldegoss, I believe, rotated. I'm trying to think what other basic Vs we're concerned about. I think those are the main ones, but Spiritome is going to make their life very difficult and essentially just becomes another counter we have from you. We've got Drapion, we've got this, we've got Gicomo. Muse Life's going to get a little bit more difficult, but you know what? It's probably about time. That deck's way too fast, way too powerful. It needs counters. And the fact that now we have a couple choices, so you have a bit more flexibility on it, it's really good for the format. We are getting a Sandy Ghast and Palo Sand. Palo Sand having Earthen Power, 80 damage if there's a Stadium in play. Correction, if you have a Stadium in play, does 80 more damage. So 160 for Psychic Double Colorless isn't too bad. Can be setting it up with like Gardevoir if you wanted, or just attach a DTE and a Psychic Energy. Not a bad number to hit. Is a little bit awkward of an attack cost to pay though, so I'm not too sure if it'll see play, but cool card. Definitely a cool card. Could be like a GLC guy. And Seru Ledge. It evolves from Charcadet. Does it? Does this one evolve from Charcadet? I thought he had a different evolution. That doesn't sound right. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. If you know more, let me know. I thought they evolved from different guys. I thought Charcadet evolved up into a red one, and there was a different, like, little blue one that evolved into this one. But um, it has Fighting Sword, 100 damage if your opponent's active Pokemon's an EX or V, 100 more, so 200 damage. Another awkward attack cost, though, in Psychic Double Colorless, and it's a stage one, so I don't know. Maybe it comes up. Maybe. We're getting the Tinkatink line though, so Tinkatink, another Tinkatink. They actually have some interesting attacks. One's got Iron Scrap Collection, put an item card from your discard pile into your hand, so an option for control decks, and Tinkatink with Smithereen Smash, 10 damage, flip a coin. If it's heads, discard an energy, effectively crushing hammer attack. 
It's pretty handy. It does evolve up into Tinkatuff, but then the main one is Tinkaton. So Tinkaton EX actually seems like a bit of a threat. Humongous Hammer is going to do 30 damage for each card in your hand. So if you have 10 cards in your hand, 300. If you're paying that attack cost with double turbo energy, 280. If you're one-shotting V-Stars, it's not bad. We've got Milotic as well that can block things from disrupting your hand with things like Roxanne or Iono and kind of protect yourself. So you can be using Zinnia's Resolve to draw into more cards or the Curlia line to draw into cards. Definitely seems like a viable EX Pokemon. 300 HP isn't anything to uh, laugh at either, since it can be one-shotting things, but other EXs can't really be hitting that kind of numbers just yet. So, pretty keen to try it out. Are getting a Larvitar, Pupitar line. I'm sure there's a Tyranitar, probably just Dark-type. I'm sure we'll see him in a second. A Barboach evolves up into Wishcash that has Rock Wildly. For each fighting energy attached to this Pokemon, discard the top card of your opponent's deck. That's a bit silly, actually. Because we've got a clay doll that's, if you have no supporters in your discard pile, accelerate a fighting energy to one of your guys. That actually might be a threat. We might get another mill. I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> like, we've still got Durant in rotation, I guess. So, people are going to run mill with probably Durant. But yeah, Wishcast is definitely an option. A Krogunkline with Toxicroak. Looks like he just does, what, 60 damage, poison your opponent's active. Crabrawler just does flat damage, evolving into Crabominable. Also looking just like flat damage, 170 during your next turn. This can't attack for double fighting and one colorless. A Passimian does 70 damage, moving energy from this Pokemon to one of your bench Pokemon. That's interesting. That's not bad. Like, basic fighting. Okay. I could see that seeing play. If Coridon EX starts seeing a bit more play, this could be an option for an easy basic Pokemon for it to set up. The Knackly line, big fan of this guy. Essentially just looks like a little toad. I like him. And evolves into like Minecraft Pokemon. Um, <laughs> the Garganical though is the final evolution. During Pokemon checkup, heal 20 damage from each of your Pokemon. This actually seems kind of playable. It'll likely be something you cheat out with Dream Ball though. But being able to go like Peonia, put a Dream Ball in the prizes, take prizes, you're going to get hit, you take a bit of damage, you get the Dream Ball, you get Garganical out, and you're healing. It doesn't say that it's limited to just one of these as well, so theoretically you could get multiples out, and between turns, heal a bunch. I don't know if this deck would make any sense in a any way, shape, or form, uh, but if you had four Garganical out, right, when your turn ends, you heal 80. Coming back to your turn from your opponent, you heal another 80. So if your opponent's only doing like 150 damage and not killing one of these, you're just fully healing it off when it bounces back to you. That's kind of funny. I actually really like that. Could be an interesting card for GLC, and I might try and find a way to work that into standard, to be honest. Uh, we are getting Tenglu EX as well. So this is the flagship Pokemon for the Claber set in Japan. The ability Cursed Ground. If this Pokemon's in your active spot, your opponent's Pokemon with damage counters have no abilities. Very handy, especially since we have Halucha that can put damage counters on two different guys. You can essentially shut off abilities. This deck, you wouldn't really need a uh, counter from you since it's counter from you. It's just put damage counters. Cool, I come out. Genesect doesn't have an ability anymore. Neat. I actually really like that. And it's not limited to Pokemon V, so you can be shutting off basic Pokemon. So even up against like Lost Box, you can turn off their confies. That actually is worth playing around with. I'm going to pick some of those up. Getting a Sneasler and Weavile. Weavile having the ability Hunt Assault. Once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active, you can switch one of your opponent's bench basics to the active spot. All right. So it's like targeted Gust, but just on basic Pokemon. Okay, that's actually not bad. It's kind of like Guzma, but just for basics and on a Pokemon. So it frees up your supporter for other options. Nice. And the Tyranitar we're seeing, so it is Dark Tap. I was wondering, I'm like, where, where is he? Where, where is the big guy? Uh, has Route 30 damage, 30 more damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. For one Dark Energy, it's not bad. On a stage two, though, a little bit awkward. And we're also seeing the first card for Shrudel and Grafifi. So Grafifi has colorful graffiti. It's similar to, I think it was 
Smurgle that we got. Um, and you get to discard any number of basic energy cards from your hand and does 40 damage for each basic energy you discard in this way. The Smurgle, I think you just had to show them. You didn't have to discard them. And it was a basic. This being on stage one and making you have to discard them it is a little bit awkward. Obviously, we've got like energy recycler to get those back. One energy to pay the attack cost to. It's not too bad. Might be a concept there. Having 90 HP too, you can get it back with the rescue carrier. So I mean, it could be a deck there. Bombardier, delivery pocket, search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it onto your bench. All right. And the other attack is just 100 damage, discard an energy from this Pokemon. Yeah, I think that's just filler. And the Noibat in Noiver and EX though. So this is very interesting. It's the first dragon cards we've seen out of Scarlet and Violet. Means Reggie Drago V Star is getting some more attacks it can use, but the Noivern is probably just going to use its own attack, to be honest. Convert Flight is double colorless energy, 70 damage during your opponent's next turn. Prevent all damage done to this by attacks from basic Pokemon. So very handy to go into Lost Box. And the second attack, Dominant Echo, does 140 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, they can't play any special energy or stadium cards from their hand. That's great. Um, up against Lugia, being able to put like Temple of Sinnoh down and shut off their energy. They're fully reliant on single strike energy, which it kind of seems like they're heading towards at the moment. It counters that really hard. Obviously, they could just set up into Lugia with Archeop still. It comes up, it can bump the stadium with its attack, but it's just a way to make their life a little bit more difficult. We are getting a Giraffe Rig, which in Scarlet and Violet got an evolution for Rigoraf. They didn't just flip his name around, did they? Oh no, they just flipped the G's and the F's. Okay, cool. Um, either face, choose either yourself or your opponent. That player shuffles their hand into their deck and draws four cards. It's on an attack, though. Feels an ability, okay. On an attack, I, I don't know. Doesn't seem very good. There's the Fletchling. We did see the Fletchender and Talonflame already as they're a fire type. And then Tandem Mouse. They're here to evolve up into Mousehold. Mousehold having gnaw up. You get to put damage counters on... Each of your opponent's Pokemon equal to the number of mouse hold in play. So if your opponent's also playing mouse hold, you put damage counters for theirs too, because it doesn't just say your mouse hold in play, which is kind of funny. So if you see a mirror match, just don't put any of your mouse hold out until your opponent has two. Put your mouse hold out. Kill them all in one go. Nice. <laughs> The Flamigo, we already mentioned it before, it has Wings of Union, but its ability Flock Together lets you look through your deck for three Flamigo. So it's a great way to get them out of the deck, discard them, scale up Wings of Union. Item cards, got de Delivery Drone, you flip two coins, if they're both heads, search your deck for any card, put it into your hand. It's kind of like a Cram-O-Matic, except on two coin flips. Is it going to see play? No, it's not. Is it a card? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, Charm of Courage, effectively just Cape of Toughness 2.0. Doesn't mention anything about GX Pokemon. Still gives your basic Pokemon 50 extra health. Nice. I like that. It's a good card. We've got a lot of big basics. Making big basics even bigger is good for the format. I like it. You can get that on uh, Entei, Suicune, and Raikou. Make them a little bit chunkier. Give it to Blissey. Make that deck still viable. It's good. Got Seguro? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you get to heal 50 damage from up to two of your Pokemon. Cool. And Iono, which is going to be a staple going forward. Everyone's going to need to get probably four copies of this card. Both players shuffle their hand into their deck. Correction, both players shuffle their hands onto the bottom of their deck. It's sort of like N, but with the wording of Marnie to speed up gameplay, which is really handy. And then draw a card for each of their remaining prize cards. So good disruption, early game, doesn't really punish you, late game can really punish you. Obviously things like Reverum and Bibberol can get around this. If you're being put down to a one or two card hand, use Bibberol, get into five cards. If your opponent doesn't have Bibberol and they're down to one or two cards, makes their life really tricky. And Wilderness of Disaster is the other stadium card we're getting. The retreat cost of each basic Pokemon, except for fighting Pokemon, is one colorless energy more. It's nice. It's essentially like the opposite of Beach Court. It's cool. And therapy energy. We mentioned it earlier, but as long as this is attached, it counts as one colorless energy, and the Pokemon this is attached to can't be asleep, confused, or paralyzed. Can still get poisoned and burned. That's fine. But the things that are going to make it so you can't attack, it's going to negate those. So it's really good for Lugia being able to search this from the deck. Other decks can be using Wigglytuff as well to accelerate it out and a basic energy for turn. 
cool. And the fact that we're going to be getting three special energies in our June set is very good because we just lost a lot of them and we need some more versatility to the format. That's it for what we're getting in Snow Hazard and Clay Burst, though. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you really excited about these cards? I know I'm pretty pumped. I think that June's going to be when this format really kind of settles out and we see where the Scarlet and Violet era is heading. We're getting a lot of very cool supporter cards. We're getting a lot of really cool Pokemon. Very excited. Uh, this format, fine. Next format, good, though. But if you agree, let me know in the comments down below. Till next time, take care of yourself.